The next thing we're gonna look at are our audio preferences. So we'll go into our preferences here, head over to audio, and just talk a little bit about what we're configuring from this page. And it will probably be very similar to the audio preferences that you have as well. First, we have the driver model. On a Mac system, core audio is absolutely fine. On a Windows system, I don't know what they've done with some of the latest updates, but you probably will wanna get an ASIO driver. I think there's a free one called ASIO for all. And that's just gonna give you a little bit more flexibility and configuration with the audio preferences. So for your input and output device, this is where you're either gonna choose what you have built into your computer, or you can choose an external audio interface. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the external audio interface, at least for my system here. Up next, we have sample rate and buffer size. We'll begin with buffer size here, and we remember buffer size from Soundation, right? We knew that we could either increase it and we'd have a little bit more computing power at the expense of trying to record things in, like in time, or we can go very low, which is gonna allow us to get very accurate recording times, like very, very accurate recording times if we go all the way down here, um, but at the expense of like CPU hit. So what I always say is when you're actually making the music, you do wanna kind of keep this pretty low, at least if you can, that's going to help with accuracy. So if you're recording in, let's say a piano part to a beat, it's gonna get your recording pretty close, pretty accurate around what, you, around what you're expecting it to be. But then once you get to the point of like mixing and mastering and you have lots and lots of plugins and you're starting to see your DSP kind of spike, I think in this one, we actually have uh, a specific view here and you can see that we're using very little right now but if i actually go in there and i think if i put this way down you're actually going to see that that's going to increase let's see here da, da, da. you can see just that by that the amount of uh, um where that it puts on the computer so let's go back into the preferences here go into audio and I could set this at what it wants me to 256 is absolutely fine so with the sample rate my general rule and it's not a rule it's really a guiding principle it's just the idea that um, regardless of the quality of the music you're listening to you can still have a really good song so a good song is a good song meaning that you could be on a bus and there could be all sorts of noise around you and you're listening to a 128 kilobit per second mp3 file with really crappy earbuds and you have to crank it all the way up to hear it but you could listen to that song and it could still really move you and it could be the most powerful song that you've ever listened to and on the flip side you could sit in a perfectly treated acoustic room in a really comfy chair with this super expensive surround sound system and you could absolutely hate the song that you're listening to it could be 15 seconds in and you want to click next immediately so what you choose to do with sample rate and bit depth i honestly think is totally up to you with kind of one exception, which we're gonna to get to in a second. So I tend to work at 48K, 24 bit. That's just kind of what I like to do, but it's totally okay to work at 44, 1, 16 bit. The idea is that the higher you go here, um, the higher the fidelity is with the recordings that you're making and the bouncings that you have. But this is really specific to recording. And that's either like recording uh, vocals or recording a guitar, or also when you're recording from the program itself, which we'll talk about, and then also exporting your final project. So for me, 48K 24 bit has always been good but 44116 could be just as good. If you have a good song, it won't make a difference. The higher you go, the larger the file size is going to be. And for now, that's kind of all you need to know. So we're gonna stick with 48K here, click OK. I'm just gonna reset this guy and now we should be good to go. So I was saying that the sample rate is really quite specific to recording. And I'll make that point for you right now by bringing in a couple of different files. So I can go in here and I can grab this file and I can grab this file. All right, let's bring this back up full screen, head into used files. So if I click on this WAV file here, you can see that the format is 96K 24 bit. But wait a minute, I thought we were working at 48K. What's going on here? My other file, this is an MP3 file. This is coming in here at 8K at 64 kilobits per second. 
With the modern digital audio workstations, it is possible to use very different file formats and different sample rates within the same track, but it's not really advisable, or I should say specifically different formats aren't advisable. So let's take a listen to these two guys back to back. Let me just make sure that they're both in raw mode here so that we'll get the same sound. Consolidate these guys out. So let's take a listen. First, this one right here is the WAV file, okay? So the 96K 24 bit. <laughs> followed by the MP3. So we can hear that the sound quality is greatly degraded here with the MP3 file. Now, if I wanted, I could actually bounce these files. So let's say that I made some adjustment to this using an audio effect. And let's just go ahead and set it up just so that this may, would make a little bit more sense. So I'll just grab a chorus and I'm just gonna use the exact same default settings on both of these guys. So now let's take a listen here. Cool, I lied, I couldn't just go with the default settings, just not in my DNA. So <laughs> there we go. So we've got the exact same settings though between the two of these. And now if I wanted, I could bounce this file out with the chorus effect on it. So when I bounce it, what are we going to expect to happen? Is it going to stay at 96K or is it gonna be downsampled to 48K? We'll find out together. So I bounce this out, I bounce this one out, and now I can go back in and I can look at these new files that were created. So we have bounce three and we have bounce four. So bounce three is this one right here. And bounce four is that one. So with bounce three, you're seeing that it was downsampled to 48K 24 bit and we can listen to it. We can hear that has the chorus effect on it. And now if I listen to the top one and compare it to the bottom one, it really sounds very similar. And that's because the difference between 96K and 48K, despite the numbers being huge, is actually very small um, from like an audio quality perspective. You're gonna need to have like really good monitors and a really good listening environment to be able to hear the difference. And even then, you may not be able to hear the difference. So, I mean, I don't think I would be able to hear the difference between those two. So now we have the MP3 file. So the question is, what happens when we upsample that? Because we now know that this bounce number four, you can see it's gonna be at 48K, 24 bit, because those are the preferences we have set up, but is it actually going to improve the quality? Is it going to make that MP3 suddenly sound a ton better? Will it make it sound like what we just listened to? Well, let's find out, compare these two. The original and now the bounce. So absolutely no real sonic difference. It's not as if we can take an MP3 file that's already been heavily compressed and upsample it to make it sound like it's of higher quality. That's just something that's impossible to do. The final point I'm going to make here is that when you are working on a project, my recommendation is that you do use the same file format. So if you are bringing in MP3 files or you are bringing in FLAC files or whatever it is you're bringing in, if you're going to use it in the project, I encourage you to be consistent. And the best thing to do is to use the, the WAV file format or the AIA, AIFF file format, the lossless file formats, and keep that consistent across the board. In some digital audio workstations, just because it's possible to bring in MP3 files and WAV files doesn't mean that they're going to play back totally seamlessly with one another in the course of a track. So I would encourage you to take, let's say you had this MP3, you really love it, you wanna use it, I would encourage upsampling it. There's the other added benefit, at least according to some people, that if you do upsample it, the plugin processing will actually be better. 
So for example, if we were working completely at 96K, maybe the plugins are gonna work more efficiently if they've been specifically coded to work at 96K. Um, in theory, all the plugins should be able to handle the different sample rates, no problem. But online, you'll hear a lot of debates raging back and forth between that. Personally, I don't think it's important, but I do think it's important that you do keep the same basic file format, even if the sample rate is changing. If you wanna be really safe, you can make it so that all of the sample rates are the same. But I've never had problems with different sample rates where I do run into problems is when you do use completely different file formats.